Oh. We're full winging it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're doing it as we're doing it live. Okay. Are you getting your radio voice on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you're so prepared today. I do you see all this stuff I wrote? Oh, that looked like book. No, that was me. I did this. Wow, good yeah, job, honey. I did. I copy and pasted good all job. of this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. For real? Some you just it. compiled it. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Roll to Forge, a tabletop role-playing space for inclusion, entertainment, and education. My name is Jeremy, and I'm here with my wonderful partner, Grace. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say wife. You almost said wife. I thought. Do you want to be my wife? Uh... Maybe we'll maybe we'll play it out in in this and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> see if we make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is our co-op game of the Iron Sworn RPG by Sean Tompkins. Uh, last time we kind of answered our initial world truth questions. And I've compiled a couple of extra questions I think we need to fill out for our world and kind of iterate on before we make our characters. But today, we should be making our characters. And you'll get to meet who we play through this campaign, session, journey. Life's a journey. But before we get into all that, uh, Grace, why don't you tell the people at home a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um. Hey, I'm Grace. I'm a lady, and I do artwork. I really like illustration. I'm really into sustainability. I'm also a professional barista. I manage a coffee shop in Cleveland, Ohio. And I like nature. Hiking is one of my favorite things to do. I absolutely love to be in the forest and to explore, and that's my happy place, so. Someone just gave you a, a, a book to read about a, a woman going through the Appalachian Trail, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's this girl who just graduated from college and decided to hike the AT, and she's 21 years old, and she's super fresh, and it's called Becoming Odessa, um, which is her trail name. Because when you go on the AT, you have a trail name. That's a thing. Um, other than your actual name. So, yeah. It's actually pretty good so far. And I'm excited to read more about it. Because I've always wanted to backpack. Even though I'm a little scared that I'd be too afraid to skittish <laughs> out in the wild. But, I mean, apparently the trail changes you forever. So, I'm interested. So if anyone has any tips out there, I know this is an RPG <laughs> channel, but these are our personal lives as well and some of our other interests. So if you have any comments you'd like to share with Grace, just let us know. Yeah, I have a lot of research to do if I were to do something like that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, some really super preliminary advice would be appreciated. <laughs> and if uh, people wanted to reach out to you, where could they uh, find you at? Oh, so I have a couple social media profiles one of them the most notable i'd say is my instagram it's grace kildo that's g r a c e k i l d o o that's my middle name if anyone's wondering and it's mostly personal but there are some drawings on there as well so i think i have a twitter too but it's <laughs> uh, i'm your only follower yeah <laughs> Mom's your only follower. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a very angsty Twitter for a little while, so I'm kind of starting fresh. <laughs> it's probably going to be just as angsty, let's be real, but yeah. Jeremy, tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> Who are you? What do you do for a living? The scope of this is changing dramatically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy. I also live in Cleveland, Ohio. I've been in hospitality for the last 10 years and looking for kind of a career shift and i really love role-playing games so that's my current big priority learning game design learning how to do podcast things so uh follow our channels the roll to forge channels that's where i mostly conversate with people uh i have really good conversations and discussions with people on twitter about 
gameplay styles when it comes to being the GM, DM, director, whatever you want to call it. I personally like director because I think it's more uh, friendly to the table. And uh, yeah, that's about the nitty gritty for me. Sorta. 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 You're way more complex than that, but we won't get into that right yeah. now. They can undo the layers as we go through these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Peel them like an onion. So now that, that little icebreaker is out of the way, uh, let's do a quick review of what we did for our setting, our world truth. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, in Iron Sworn, the default setting is a place known as the Iron Lands. Uh, we will be playing as characters that are third generational in this land. So we're pretty recent in our history, just a little over 200 years or so, maybe a little less. Um, the, uh, we don't know much about the old world that we came from other than we ran from it because of a disease that was plaguing the land. And we came west over ships to kind of quarantine ourselves from that and we lost many along the journey due to either their choice or the survivors choices uh, we still believe that some of us are cursed or haunted by those individuals did we bring anything along of the old world or is that something that we're going to explore later i mean our culture essentially uh, well, our, our, our culture but is there a written language or yeah. do we have books and things or did we yeah. leave those behind because we were in such a hurry to get out? No, I mean, a lot of it's oral tradition stuff, I think. Right. Uh, there could be some sort of writing lore keeping system and maybe that's something we make a part of our world as we talk about this. So uh, some couple uh, givens, there are no thriving cities. Instead, Ironlanders live in isolated villages and steadings. Their homes are modest buildings of wood, stone, and thatch, so there's not any intense uh, metalwork framing for architecture here. Um, coins have little value here. Most commerce is through barters or favors. There's not really a way to get rich other than in the bonds of your countrymen. Uh, communities sometimes band together under a powerful leader, but there are no kingdoms. Uh, territorial, territorial lines are loosely drawn. Uh, spear, axe, shield, and bow are the dominant weapons. Swords are rare and highly prized. Some warriors choose to wade into battle clad in iron, while others trust in their prowess or in the strength of their shields. Uh, in uh, this setting, or the characters that we play, it is assumed that we are good at combat, though later we can pick assets to further enhance those abilities if we so choose. Uh, there are definitely supernatural creatures and beasts that are rare, frightening, and dangerous, and we'll get more into that into our setting choices. Um, and there, we are the first humans here. Uh, there have been no other humans, to our knowledge, in this lands, but there were people known as the firstborn occupying this country. The country has kind of a, a history of its own. Elves, giants, uh, these wolf people called the Vor Voru, uh, primordials. They all kind of roam about the lands and sort of deep, segregated uh, terrain pieces, deep forests, deep lakes, uh, hollow caves, tops of mountains. We occupy kind of the plains and fields and plateaus of this world. So we're out in the open. Out in the open, but they don't really <laughs> want to deal with us. Or maybe they do. That's for us to decide. And I know that... Uh, I know that I've seen a couple of streams, especially uh, Adam Cobill, uh, kind of do a half-elf for his character, but I think that I mostly want to stick to being a human since our history is kind of, we were the first humans mm -hmm. here. And for our uh, firstborn selection, they kind of live isolated from us. Uh, but yeah. So for, uh, I want to ask some additional questions from our world setting choices last time. So this, uh, the old world, we ran from a disease. Uh, I was kind of wondering uh, what are, how is that disease caused and uh, what are the symptoms? If we know. We could also not know, but I thought this was a, a question we might need to answer in some capacity. Hmm. either say that it's mysterious or say that we know exactly what it is or what it looks like or either 
or? Hmm. Maybe it was some kind of flora or fauna affecting the water system or something. So some sort of sap or like pollen, algae. an algae of some sort. Yeah, like a purple algae. Uh, what are the symptoms of this sickness? Obviously, it causes death in some capacity. I mean, we had to get rid of people, so. Um, <laughs> breathing issues? Maybe it's some sort of, like, paralytic. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Slow paralysis of the body. Yeah. Some sort of paralyzing toxin. Yeah, and it just becomes more and more paralyzing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It starts with like sleep paralysis and then you keep going to bed and waking up and becoming more and more paralyzed after you sleep. That would be interesting. Maybe it's some sort of like, so the book doesn't have this beast necessarily, but maybe some sort of like Maybe it's like it's called Medusa's something, Medusa's kiss or something like that. Mm, beast? Yeah, in the book it lists some beasts and horrors like given to you and what their uh, harm ranking is and stuff like that mechanically in the game. Huh. So the disease came from a beast? No, no, no. I'm just saying we could like call it Medusa's kiss. Oh, because it freezes you? Yeah. And it's kind of, what's crazy about it is that it's, silent like mm -hmm. you it usually when you think plague you think rotting flesh and mm -hmm. all of those like gross sicknesses but it's just a very just... subtle yeah disease sure yeah cool uh our next selection that we had to make was iron and we chose uh the inscrutable metal pillars that are found throughout the land that are uh ancient and indestructible so some questions uh that i had there is is there some sort of magic that comes from them or do they emanate some sort of unnatural effect on the land i was kind of leaning towards no but right then what kind of purpose is that? maybe that's something we discover as we play right i think that yeah because we talked about the firstborn and how they never go near the mm -hmm. the iron pillars mm -hmm. because well, we don't know why, but there's nothing obviously emanating for them from them or anything. For us, anyways. Yeah. Maybe they have a supernatural sense right. of something. Maybe if you get close enough, it makes this, like, low-toned sound or something. Like, there's this sound that's coming from them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, my... I was thinking about this earlier today, and uh, my my... Lovecraftian eldritch horrors mind since we have horrors in this world which we'll get to in a little while but um I was thinking that the metal pillars were like potential gates for like these horrors oh, to come out of that's pretty cool yeah and like that's what <laughs> and that would also like sort of be like why there's iron priest and why they swear fealty to these things because it kind of like calls to them mm -hmm. uh, just one potential interesting theme of that yeah like dark priests yeah like the iron priests are are worshiping something they don't understand and when it when they realize what it is it's too late okay. it's like an entity that promises you all-encompassing what power. if what if the their um remnants from ancient ginormous narwhals like iron narwhals <laughs> their bones were made of <laughs> iron <laughs> and all that's left are the horns coming out from the ground <laughs> the soil is just their skeletons and built upon <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the nar it's narwhal horns they wouldn't be called that. They'd be called something else. Yeah. Yeah. So it used to be, the land used to be an ancient sea, you know? Yeah. And eventually over time, 
the sediment geology things happened filled the ancient sea and the narwhals were frozen in place anyway that's just a thought but we don't have to go there we'll put a pin in that (laughs) (laughs) okay i forgot to set our alarm cool uh so all right so narwhals got it we'll we'll talk about that so so the so the gate thing i like i like that idea it seems i think it'd be cool i i'm i think that it hasn't happened yet but i think that oh like right the iron priests keep talking about like this this coming of something and it seems like the iron priests kind of have this hive mind about them you know what i mean or maybe maybe they're like main metal pillars and each one has its own like eldritch deity behind it or something um that could be a part of like our circles conversation stuff but that was just my kind of thought is that i was trying to link like horrors and beasts and like the metal pillars all into one thing because i was like well what kind of causes the horrors in these lands and maybe the metal pillars are the reason but those are just my thoughts um so legacies we picked we are the first humans to walk these lands i don't think i really have i don't think there's much questions beyond that like we're the third generation of humans we made settlements we've gotten resources um i don't think there's really more to elaborate on that than that uh communities we picked that communities are called circles Uh, they can range from a setting with a few families to a village of several hundred Um, some circles belong to nomadic folks some powerful circles might include a cluster of settlements wet trade and sometimes feuds with other circles um i was the questions i had were uh what are these circles based on like is there um is there like a circle of i was just using like druid inspiration from from D and was thinking like is there a circle of the moon the tribe a circle of the shepherd like that sort of stuff like do they revere something um or is it just like location based um Hmm. people live there because some are more popular than others um i don't know why how close together are these people maybe they'd be pretty far apart okay because if the environment is changing at all you know like the the ecosystems Maybe they're very adapted to their specific area. What do you mean by ecosystems changing? I mean like desert versus jungle, or is that too extreme? This is, uh, the lands are actually very like Northern Island inspired, so it's very like rocky plateaus close okay, to the ocean. Okay, so they all look pretty similar and yeah. they they have probably very similar resources mountains yeah well depending like some i mean uh this is the map and you know there's all these mountains that are up here and like these open plains and you have all this coastline stuff so mm. but it's all very like wales united kingdoms scotland iceland Greenland type stuff. Hmm. No jungles and deserts to speak of. But I've maybe, heard, yeah, I, I got that. But maybe it's like maybe it's like maybe there's secret ones that like the elves or giants are in or something. Mm-hmm. Could be. Um. Yeah, I, they can. Mm. Are these circles just like? Do we just call? a village a circle or do the circles mean something is what i was really asking i think village is just a circle circle is another word for village cool yeah sorry (laughs) no you're good uh for leaders we picked varied leaders across all circles uh so you can have anything from a powerful family ruled community to a council of elders uh to a religious leader such as the iron priests um so yeah okay uh i don't think i had any specific questions just from settlement to settlement we might have to decide like or find out how they decide who the leaders are and who those leaders are um defense 
we decided that every setting or circle uh, has uh, an authority group known as the wardens, who operate as soldiers, guards, and militia. They serve their communities and are heavily linked to them and act as sentries while patrolling the uh, surrounding lands and organizing defenses in times of crisis. Uh, but then we also, uh, as a part of that, there are the free wardens who have no bind to any communities and who help protect traveling caravans or serve from community to community. Um, so my additional questions to that were, um, since wardens are bound to a community, what does that binding look like? Like, are you swearing an oath of some sort? You know, are you, are you, uh, um, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think you're bound to the Like, is it circle. by word? Is it magical? Is it a part of uh, a religion or something like that? Mm, say, like, maybe a tattoo or a scarification kind of thing. Like a branding? Mm-hmm. So then... Uh, so you're marked. You you know what your purpose is, you, and everybody else does as well. Yeah. Well, you know where you're from. So, you're, so let's say that... So then that ties back to the circles... Does every circle kind of have uh, its own symbol slash iconography slash like you know we we are the 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 eagle rocks yeah you know what I mean yeah I think so or like beads or something yeah. or some kind of colors maybe it's unique to a circle yeah. Uh, and then what are kind of the pros and cons versus being a free warden who's probably not branded i mean is that even a good thing to be a free warden or a bad right thing? i think maybe people view it as being too free-spirited and too kind of like rebellious um but they still help people yeah maybe it's like the whole masked hero thing vigilante type yeah, situation right is it by choice or are they kicked out of a circle or mm -hmm. is it i don't know i don't know what do you think i think that it, that it might be a choice i don't think it's like an exilement or anything like that or maybe it's a choice that can both be made by the particular free warden or for Maybe yeah. maybe wardens of specific circles are only allowed to do things within that circle. Right. And the free ones so. have to roam, but it's extremely dangerous. Oh, well, yeah. Well, we'll get to the danger part. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. what I mean is like, maybe you fucked up or something, so you have to be a free warden. No, I think I think I would like the free warden thing to be a choice for people. I don't think it's like an exiled thing. Because then, what's their what? Why would they want to help people who are traveling? Because coins not worth anything, and they can't really like live in a community. So maybe it's like the scouts in Attack on Titan. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so as well. Yeah. They know they're gonna die, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for humanity, right? Right. Uh, next, we have mysticism. Magic is rare and dangerous, but those who wield it are uh, are truly gifted. So we this kind of says that magic is soft in our setting. Soft. Uh, which just means that it's a very soft, malleable, not well understood system of events. Uh. What does that magic kind of look like? What What is it capable of? Uh, I think that... Because in this game, as a part of your character, you can pick uh, an asset called a ritual, which is kind of like a, a blessing or a magical ability you can concoct. Um, Maybe there's... But it's nothing like slinging fireballs. It's things like uh astral projection and talking to animals and mm. yeah it's nothing like terribly offensive some of them can be but i was gonna say like maybe there's an ability to create some kind of light 
with something, with some sort of... Is alchemy potions and stuff? Yeah. So, because darkness is such an important part of this Mm -hmm. world, maybe there is some some ability to make light in the darkness, you know? Maybe, yeah. Uh, It could definitely be something we, we... uh look towards so like maybe this magic is specifically light magic you know we don't really have to go the full spectrum and say like control the elements and blah 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 right blah, you know what i mean right um so cool we'll just leave it we'll just leave it. there's like some sort of light magic and whatever light can do you know you can pinpoint light and make a fire you can create colors yeah maybe, or so. use yeah or use the stars and yeah some way. yeah really ex- we'll, we'll use light as our box and kind of expand out okay. from that uh have what it can do all things that light what is it linked to yeah what is it linked to do we think that like it's a do we think they revere the sun or something uh is there um a special material uh, we don't have to decide what that material is if we decide that it could be something we find out over play, but maybe it's like mathematics some kind of geometry when stars are aligned in a certain way or so it's very uh, cosmology, right place, right time moment, maybe like you can't enact light magic without the moon, like on a new moon or like a uh, close to a new moon, like light magic is weaker. Maybe light magic is based on like the amount of light available. So like an overcast mm-hmm. day. Yeah, like from not like a personal human resource, but like the cosmology. So like the more stars and full moon in the sky or if it's daytime, light mat. It's kind of like a solar po- uh, solar powered right Type magic right yes yeah let's go with that and just light from light as well right now uh religion the people honor old gods and new in this harsh land a prayer is a simple but powerful comfort who are the old gods who are the new gods we could gods <laughs> gods it's a whole other yeah layer. yeah it's something that you know initially i was kind of like thinking about tying this to circles and maybe like so i guess the the better question is what type of religion is this right like is this an animistic slash shamanistic is this uh is this very like pantheon human personified beings um i was actually I'm really inspired by this site called um, Angelirium. It's a um, portfolio by Peter. Shoot, forgetting his name. You have the book yeah. over here. Peter. Uh, nope, not on that. <laughs> Peter Moorbacher. Backer. Bacher. He used to be a Magic the Gathering artist. He may still be a Magic the Gathering artist, um, but I love his Angelirium. Uh, so you want it to be like Pantheon? Well, not even. These are so all of uh, all of these are like angels and watchers, and the gods are more like these um, the emanations from. Uh, uh judaism from uh judaism uh culture so uh i don't know maybe we can maybe we can talk and explore those and kind of add those to our document as we play maybe we can just randomly draw a card when we need a god present huh huh sure Uh, yeah uh and is prayer tied to magic in any way this light magic that we're kind of concocting no great (laughs) <laughs> do you think prayer does anything no great do no you... no 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 uh cool so the firstborn uh these are the elves giants trolls wolf people primordials of this world the varu um 
we said that they uh, live in isolation and are fiercely protective of their lands. And I was thinking, do any firstborn exiles live among us humans, the Ironlanders? No? No. Do you think we've seen exiles? Like maybe a lone one or two of a type? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Uh, beasts of all sorts roam the Iron Lands. They dwell primarily in the reaches but range into settled lands to hunt. There they often prey on cattle, but attacks on travelers, caravans, and even settlements are not uncommon. So for us, beasts are very prevalent in this world. And it even has things for elder beasts uh, in the book. So like bigger than normal or a little bit mutated, not in like a terrifying way, but like maybe an extra sharp pair of claws or fangs that are unnaturally long, or maybe their mm. fur is replaced by like some sort of tougher hide or something. Um, maybe it's, maybe it's some sort of merge with the primordials and there's like a, an earth bear and like a, a thunder boar and stuff like that. Um, but my questions were, um, so beasts are based on normal animals, but elder beasts do exist. Uh, are elder beasts intelligent? Can they have complex thoughts? Mm. Can they speech to humans and firstborn and things? I'm thinking like the wolf mother from Princess Mononoke. That would be right. an example right. of an elder beast. I think that we don't think they can, but they can. So we just don't know yet. Yeah. Sure. That's not an ability we have. Well, you're saying humans specifically can't speak to these animals and they can't speak to us? Well, I think they assume because that's not how it was in their world. So we just don't know, no, like yeah. no animals, yeah. like been like, I'm curious about you. Yeah. Let's have a chat. Right. Maybe we'll find one during play. If you're hearing that rumbling sound, it means my microphone is very powerful, and it was just garbage day today. <laughs> um, and can beasts be affected by these horrors that we're going to talk about in a little bit is another question I had. I kind of like the idea of having these kind of like devil beast creatures be rare but present in mm -hmm. this world. Sort of showing the encroachment of these like metal pillar gates and how the corruption is kind of affecting the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of like their disease. Right. May yeah, maybe it's for us, it's kind of like a, 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 what do you call that? Yep. <laughs> Uh, and then horrors, we are wary of dark forests and deep waterways for monsters lurk in those places. In the depths of the long night, when all in, is wreathed in darkness, only fools venture beyond their homes. Are horrors linked to nature? Are they magical? Are they truly only nocturnal? I do think they're only nocturnal. Mm -hmm. But because of the type of lands we live in, travel is necessary. Camping is necessary. Right. Trading is necessary. Yeah, Trading and, is necessary. and we don't live in cities or anything, so our, our buildings are vulnerable. Yeah, so it, them being only nocturnal isn't really, like, a hindrance to them. It just makes, like, shoot, we're running out of daylight. And maybe, like, it's, you know, like we said with the light magic, like, maybe the light magic can, like, ward them off. But when it's a new moon, maybe no one tries to travel on a new moon. Maybe it's one of those crazy-ass places that... Have, only have like six hours of daylight or something for the sake of our sanity let's just keep it the normal 24 <laughs> okay, okay. hours yeah. well, 24 <laughs> hours of daylight what do you mean no 24 hours in a day like yeah, 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 nine, but... 10 hours of light or okay. something like that yeah <laughs> we're trying to go crazy all right cool so that's our world so now we get to talk about our potential characters i hope that talking about this has spurred some ideas within you and within me. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of like go through the steps on the book here. Building character. Yep, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it talks about envisioning your character, uh, 
you are awesome, your character is highly competent, you're smart, brave, and driven, you can hold your own in a fight, when you swear an iron vow, you mean it. So the biggest thing about this game is that when you swear a vow, you are upholdent to that vow. It's, it's a big decision you make, and you fully go into doing it. Okay. Just so you know. Uh, and be who you want. The people of the Irelands are diverse. Communities are formed through shared interests, mutual protection, or strong leadership. And respect is still paid to the traditions of the old world. But Irelanders largely left behind their cultural divisions when they crossed the vast northern ocean. Even within a single community, you'll find a fusion of old world and Ironland influences. So we're kind of like the third generation breed of the old world traditions kind of transitioning into an uh, a warping, a, a new modern style of traditions and stuff. Uh, so where to start? I think that we should start with our name. And it does have uh, random roll tables for names to kind of stay within the setting of this. So I think that we should use that. So we go to page 184. And here is a list of names. I don't think that they are separated by gender. So cool. if you want to pick either page 184 or 185. Uh, 185. Let's do it. Okay. And then you're going to roll D100. Uh, do you have a piece of paper? Let me get you a piece of paper here. Because you may want a couple options. You may not feel the first one. I can just... You, okay. Can you just use the back? No. Okay. You're going to need to use both of these. <laughs> uh, so, 80. 80. 80. <laughs> uh, so, 80 is Rodri. R-H-O-D-D-R-I. R-H-O? Yeah. D-D? Mm-hmm. R-I. Rodri? Mm-hmm. 12? 12. Ada, A D D A. Ada. Twenty-two. Uh, twenty-two is Makari, M A K A R I. Makari, that's cool. You want to do one more? Sure. Because we can save these names for like NPCs or stuff that are related to us. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Well, they're all really close together. Asha, A S H A. All right, and then I will also do that. I'm using metal dice, so the people at home can really feel the ASMR of me click clacking on the <laughs> table here. <laughs> uh, that is 34. I didn't come prepared. Uh, 34, we're gonna do page 184. And that is gonna be Deshi is the first one. 57, uh, that is going to be Nissus. Kind of like Nissus. 76, that's going to be Cormac. Ooh, Cormac. Mm -hmm. But I think that was uh, Sean Tompkins' character's name in his game. So I may not take that one. The same game? Yeah. Oh. Well, he's the writer. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 81, Pendry. Pendry, I like that. Pendragon. Ooh. I might do that. I might do Pendry just because now I'm like Arthurian inspired. <laughs> I think that's it. I think my character's name is going to be Pendry. I don't know if there's any surnames yet. I haven't decided. I like Makari. Makari? Mm hmm. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, and if you want to take your character sheet, mm -hmm. that's the move sheet. Where's my character sheet, Grace? I don't know, Jeremy. Did you give me two? No, I did not. Oh, here it is. My character sheet. <laughs> Makari. Makari, Makari. Pendry. Maybe a last name will come to me. Pendry after Pendragon. Ooh, maybe it's like... Uh, maybe it's like something Welsh. Like a, like Drake Drac or something like that. Is that a Welsh name? Pendry Drac. 
Well, they they have a very like dragon rich culture. That's their symbol. Uh, so characters names cool. Next are our stats. Stats. So in Iron Sworn, you have five stats. You have Edge, which determines your quickness, agility, and prowess in ranged combat. Heart, which determines your courage, willpower, empathy, sociability, and loyalty. Iron, your physical strength, endurance, aggressiveness, and prowess in close combat. Shadow, sneakiness, deceptiveness, and cunning. Wits, expertise, knowledge, and observation. So you get to apply a single three, two twos, and two ones to your stats. Obviously, the higher is your better stat. So something you're really good at, two things you're okay at, and then two things, I guess two things you're okay at, and two things you're good at, and one thing you're exceptional at. Hmm. Hmm. When I see Pendry, I see sort of like a, see like a kind of a, I guess I see a knight. I guess I see some sort of like Nordic version of a knight happening here. So I I might do three in either iron or heart. I think I'm going to do three in heart. I think, so what is edge again? Edge is quickness, agility, and prowess in ranged combat. Hmm. I think I'm definitely going to do two in iron. I'm going to do two in wits as well. I think I want either three in edge or shadow. Do you have any sort of like inspiration for your, I was going to say Mikasa. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that wouldn't be super Mikasa. Well, edge edge would be extreme Mikasa. And shadow. I mean, she's not sneak or she's not like a deceiver, but. Um, no, I don't really have a specific character in mind. I just think that she's really good at sneakiness. So maybe that's my three. Cool. Shadow, and then Edge is two, and then another one is two. Iron. Iron is good for close combat, physical strength, endurance, aggressiveness. Mm. Mm, Not a two. What is hard again? Courage, willpower. Empathy, sociability, and loyalty. Mm, she has that and then just ones for the other ones two. for the other two yeah. that's okay they're still positive so these are the bonuses you'll apply to your action die when oh, you make okay. rules cool. yeah great different moves require different stats um next is health which starts at five but we'll use uh paper clips to represent those things oh, yeah. got those. spirit is also five supply is shared between the both of us in this co-op game so anytime we do a move that caught that forces us to lose supply uh, we both tick that down so it'll always be the same but it will start at five Uh, Just to kind of give an explanation of the other things on the sheet, on the left-hand side, you'll see the momentum. So momentum is kind of a representation of how you're faring in your quests. And you can use that in a couple of different ways. Um, As your your max momentum is always 10 and your starting momentum is plus 2, it's not 0. Plus 2 is kind of the middle ground. You can do some like tricky things with momentum, such as burning momentum... Where if you need to, like, if you want to beat a die roll, you can replace your die roll with whatever your current momentum is. Um, And negative momentum is not great because it cancels any action die that is equal to or lower than it. So, for example, if you have negative one and you rolled a one, that action die doesn't count. So, if you have negative four, anytime you roll a four or lower, that action die does not count towards succeeding in your move. Okay. Uh, then we have vows. You should start your first session with two vows, a long-term goal, your background vow, and an immediate situation which must be dealt with, your inciting incident. You'll find quest starters in Chapter 4, your world, and Chapter 5, foes and encounters. To learn more about your starting vows, see page 195. So um, we basically need two vows uh, to have in our journey, and this should definitely be penciled, if not penciled because we'll be doing a lot of erasing. And uh, let's see. 
what is sort of my long-term goal as Pendry, the Arthurian Nordic Knight? Hmm. Or should we decide our inciting incident first, like how our story starts off? Well, what is an example of a vow that you take? Uh, so in Adam Koble's game, he has he has made sort of like a half elf character, and he wants to kind of form a community for his half elven people. So that's kind of like his long term goal uh, for his character. Okay, so it has something. It's like a personal. Yeah, it should be goal. Yeah, or it can be like personal to your community. I mean, where where do we kind of live in this world? We have a couple of versions of things we can be a part of. We can be a part of this iron priest culture. We can be a part of uh, um, these wardens. We can be um, a whole bunch of things. And it can also help with our assets too. Maybe we'll save the vowels stuff after we pick like assets and stuff. Okay. So bonds, we will also need to come up with three background bonds for people or communities that we are attached to. Uh, and then we also get to pick assets. So this is the fun gamey bits of the game. So there are four asset types. Um, there are paths, combat talents, rituals, and companions. Companions are animal creatures, or I think even one of them is a person that can be, that can kind of tag along with us. Uh, rituals are sort of like magical blessing abilities or, uh, or, um, chants of some sort. Paths are kind of like who, like what your profession is in the world, like things like you can be a story weaver or a herbalist or something like that. And then combat talents are specific to what kind of weapon you think you would want to use. So you get to pick three. Okay. So I usually like to start with path. Um, but let me see if I can bring up some sort of bigger screen of it. That way, it's, that way you don't have to fandangle with these cards that I pre-cut out for this. Assets. So there are the companion ones. You can pick like a cave lion, a hawk, a giant spider. You can have a kindred human person with you. Give them names. They each have abilities. Uh, Pads, you're a dancer, you're bonded, you're battle sworn, you're blade bound, you're uh, devotant. And so you pick three? Yes, yeah, so you get to pick three of these cards in, I assume, any combination, uh, but I'm probably going to pick a path, a ritual, and a combat talent. Or maybe two rituals, I haven't decided yet. Uh, some of these can only, you can only have them if you meet a prerequisite. So like writer, you have to have a horse companion. Mm. Otherwise writer doesn't work. And shadow can once you become corrupted? Yeah, I don't know what that means. You don't know what the corrupt action is? I don't know what or being corrupt. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well I'm just enjoying reading all of these, so <laughs> can we keep going? Uh, I think that, oh there are a couple more paths here. Sighted... I know it's tough decisions. It is. Thank you for the folks at home for being patient with us while we <laughs> make these decisions. It's a, it's a lot. There's a lot of cards. Um. Do you like the sound of this paper shuffling I'm doing? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Spirit okay. bound is interesting. Kind of like that. You wanna? Yeah. There you are, spirit bound. I'm going to pick a path. I'm trying to find something that fits this Arthurian Nordic knight that I have in my mind that has a silky black hair. Weapon master? Nah, I don't think so. Revenant? Nah. Veteran? Nah. Bonded? I do have I have, I do have great heart. Loyalist? Banner sworn, ooh, honor bound. I might do honor bound. 
When you turn the tide, envision how your vows give you strength in this moment. Then when you make your move, add plus two instead of plus one and take plus one momentum to hit. Hmm. Hmm. So you have to pick three of these, right? Yeah. Okay. If you want, you can start looking through another type. Um, it might be nice to have a dog. Aw. Hawk's kind of dope too, damn. Now, if I was really going to go in on this, I might choose blade bound and have like a special sword. <laughs> <laughs> Giant spider. <laughs> Your spider uncovers secrets. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hound. I think I want a dog. You can have a dog. Dog. I have a dog. Ooh, empowered title and lineage. I think it's between empowered or blade bound. Or both? Mmm, then ritual. Wait, what about combat talent? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Let's see, empowered. When you sojourn, this is basically when you uh, heal up in town or uh, try to ask for help from a local settlement uh, and score a weak hit or miss, which we'll get into once we play. You may claim the rights of hospitality warranted by your title or legion or lineage, excuse me. If you do, roll all dice again and add plus one. On a miss, you are refused and your presumption causes significant new trouble. Ooh, I don't think I would do that. Blade, blade bound just seems too fighty for me. Blade bound. I want something that's more about Not as much brain. I want a little bit more that has to do with like honorability, mm. leadership. Mm. There was an honor bound one. Improviser, infiltrator. Honor bound when you turn the tide and vision how your vows give you strength. When you make a move which gives you an ad for sharing a bond. I'm going to do honor bound. Tough, tough, tough. When you wear an animal pelt and dance in the moonlight. Mm. Maybe you're one of these light casting. Uh, new. No, new. I'm not. I mean, I. I'm at least not that intensely. Hang on. I think I'm gonna. Sh I think I'm gonna shift up and go. I think I'm gonna go a little bit of like an Arthurian berserker. Can, can I see the uh, those when you're done? Yeah. Yeah. Here, you can look through these. I'm going to look through the rituals to see if my... There's a little bit of magic in the Arthur world. Maybe maybe I'm a combination of uh, Morgaine. Ooh, I think I might divination. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the king. I got to know the way. I think I might do two paths. I think I may add... Blade bound. I'm just gonna go for the Excalibur type type stick here. Trying to decide if I should do Slinger or Archer. What does Slinger do? When launched from a sling, a simple stone inflicts two harm instead of one. So it's it's just interesting. I'd have a slingshot basically. Well, a sling is like a. Oh. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, I see it. I see it. it has a little yeah, yeah, a little picture. picture. That's pretty unique. I like that. I'm going to do that instead of Archer. Okay. So I guess I have my things. All right. So uh, why don't you tell the folks at home what assets you picked and what they do? Okay. So I have... Should I read all of it? Just the, just the dots. Just the black dots. Okay. So my first asset is a path and it's spirit bound. 
So I am haunted by someone whose death I caused through my actions or failures. Um, when I consult with their spirit to secure an advantage or gather information, add plus one and take plus two momentum on a hit. On a weak hit, also endure stress. Um, yeah. There are a couple other things, but I, but I won't read them. Hound. My hound is my steadfast companion. So You're, I can use my hound senses. Hmm? You can pick one of the three abilities on there. Oh. Yeah, you get to pick which one it starts with. I see. Just with the companion? Yeah. Okay. Um... She's smiling. Loyal. <laughs> <laughs> when I endure stress in the company of my hound, add plus one. Um, and then my combat talent is slinger. So if you wield a sling, when launched from a sling, a simple stone infects two, inflicts two harm instead of one. When you enter the fray by barraging your foe with sling bullets... Uh, you may inflict harm on a strong hit. Do you mean barraging? Barraging. <laughs> Is that... Sorry, I don't read these words often. <laughs> these combative read. words. I don't read. I can't read. Uh, cool. Uh, barraging. All right. Uh, there are those. We don't need debilities because we don't start with them. Experience. We get experience when we complete vows. We'll worry about that when the time comes. Uh, equipment. So everyone, uh, equipment is a little bit more narrative than uh, decisive in this game, but it is noted in the text that uh, if you want to be kind of a standard Ironlander with cheap mundane gear, uh, you would have like a hand-me-down set of quilted armor, a uh, ratty traveling cloak, battered windshield, a spear, a worn knife, just stuff that's a little bit run down. Uh, people with nicer equipment are kind of revered. It's a little bit harder to have those sort of nicer items. So it's just, just dependent. I think I have nicer items because I'm King Arthur, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh... mm... I don't. You think you have kind of mundane gear? Yeah. Okay. What's, uh, so I guess for one of our bonds, one of them would be to each other in some form. Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we know each other? What's our bond to one another? Maybe we were childhood friends mm -hmm. and you took the valiant knight path. Mm-hmm. And I was always like the rough and tough lady. <laughs> uh huh. Good. So you became more refined, and I kind Are of you stayed I'm the dainty? same. No, no, I'm just saying you're fancier, and I think that you think high highly of yourself. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm humble. I spit a lot. Um. Humble and crass. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say crass, no. She actually spit, folks. Ho, 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 ho. There's spit in our carpet. There's spit in our carpet. Weird. Um, no, I wouldn't say I'm crass. I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, this isn't you. This isn't you. Keep me grounded. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you grounded. When I'm like, we should fight our primordial. I can beat you up. <laughs> Maybe I like not. To, I like to see you try. <laughs> we raffle. We raffle. We raffle. That's how we warm up in the morning. Yeah. Wink. Are we dating? Are we are we courting? Um. I don't know. Are we gonna do the like typical? I'm a tomboy, and you like the pretty girls, the maidens with the long hair and the dresses, no, and fuck I'm like. That. <laughs> no way. No, you think I'm hot. Yeah, I like them dirty. <laughs> <laughs> or we're both gay. Or I, I'm gay. I don't want to do that because I don't I don't have any experience in that. And I think it would be unfair if I told that story. It's okay. not my story to tell. Okay, well. Okay. Uh, then what do you think? Should we be dating? 
I don't, I don't, maybe, maybe we like each other right now, like, like, like each other, uh, but we're just doing, it is whatever we're doing. Okay, how old are we? I think, I think about, I think I'm in my early 30s or so, mid 30s. Mid 30s, um, okay, I'm 30. Okay. So I have a bond to you, uh, we each need two more bonds to either people or communities, uh, do we live in a community or what, what are we? If I'm, if I'm, can't, I don't want to go full, I don't want to be the leader of a community. I don't want that. Uh, and I also don't want to be like a prince or anything, but I want to be a leader. Okay. Maybe. I kind of like the idea of my character being the leader of like these, of a free warden group. Okay. Sure. My my knights at the round table. I don't really think that I'm a leader in any way. I just kind of do what I want. Um, I mean, I can be part of the Free Wardens because I, I want to be close to you and mm -hmm. I want to... I'd rather be a Free Warden than a Warden of a specific circle. Maybe I would have been like, it's a, it's a rough and tumble life out there. And you're like, I'm tougher than that. You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe I was like, don't come, save yourself. This is something I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, someone's got to watch your ass. There it is, classic. The classic yeah, watch right. your ass. <laughs> <laughs> someone's got to clean up after you. Okay, uh, so maybe uh, we are we have a bond with this free warden company then. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I guess we're roaming and we kind of camp and things. Is there, do you have a, a particular, do you have a bond with your dog? Yeah. Do I have to have a specific bond with my dog? It's just, just a bond. Not like a specific bond. Yeah. Yeah. I love my dog. Yeah. This dog is everything. My dog is everything to me. It's dog number one, Pendry number two. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, for me, I think, I think I have some type of like Lancelot guy. <laughs> okay. Like you're actually friends with him? Yeah. Or maybe like an advisor or something. Well, I don't know. There's, so there's a table for a person's role. So let's go to oracles. Let's go to character roles. Can we just take a second to appreciate the design of this book too? I... Listen, I love it. Yeah, it's very pretty. I've this is also the first game I've s seen that uses photography, like real world photography, as its art pieces. Oh, and they're amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see, settlement names, character role. There we go. All right, let's see what this person is to me in our in our group. We're looking at 70, that makes this person a herder. So we have some sort of, I don't know, what would they herd if we were free wardens? <laughs> we keep a bunch of chickens that <laughs> yes. follow us around. What chicken herder? Turkeys. Turkey Turkeys. herder. Oh my God. Why not? <laughs> Gotta eat He's somehow. Gotta, yeah, gotta eat somehow for sure. Cool. Uh, and this person, let's use one of the names on my sheet. This person is ooh, Dishi, Deshi, 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 the chicken, chicken herder. All right, Deshi, the chicken herder. Uh, cool. Do we want last names? We could like pick a different Ironlander name. Hmm. Hmm. I think I might just pick one off. Pendry. Pendry. I'm Makari Torgan. Great. Pendry. Pendry.
Mindriagon. Mindriagon. <laughs> <laughs> Merc. No. Pendry's such a hard. Pendry boss. Pendry Talus. Pendry boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pendry is just fine. Balls. Cool. All right. Now we need uh, our... So what is our long-term goal? Our, our big vow? Mm-hmm. What have we sworn to do with our lives? Let's see. Talk more about vows on page 195. Inciting incident. All right, let's see. Let's see what it says for that. Inciting incident. Inciting incident. Envision your inciting incident. Make it personal. Why is this important to your character? Make it a problem that won't go away on its own. Give it a ticking clock. Make it universal. Up the skate ska- stakes <laughs> and limit the scope. Let's see. It has to be some. What were we just doing? What do we constantly do? What do free wardens do? Free wardens protect the people who travel along the roads. They're adept at fighting at night. Fighting beasts and horrors and things. They protect people. We have chickens to herd. Hmm. Maybe we're out trying to slay a particular beast of some sort is that is that something that could be our inciting incident sure and something maybe goes wrong let's look at some of the some of the beasties they have some starting quests attached to them let's see let's do Are we out slaying a beast or are we out slaying a horror? Beast. Let's see. Let's do. Ooh, how about a basilisk? That's a pretty big one to start with. <laughs> okay, well, but so maybe it's it's something we fought, and like we were decimated. Mm-hmm. That's a harrow spider. Dangerous. That's rank two. You know, it has to be something that we have to solve and hasn't been solved yet. Hmm. Mammoth. Maybe maybe we were fighting a mammoth and thought it would be easy. But why? Why would we have to fight the mammoth? What's the problem? The no. herbivores. I, I'm thinking... Something more spooky, like a basilisk or a harrow spider. Leviathan's too big. Maybe we were in over our head on the basilisk. Yeah. Let's see, it's quest starter is the adventurer set out to slay a basilisk, only to become its next meal. Because the serpent digests its prey slowly, the remains of the adventurer are still undoubtedly within the beast, along with the heirloom sword he wielded. What is your relationship to this person? Why is recovering the sword so important to you? So we're allowed to choose this as our... Yeah. Inciting incident? Yeah. Hmm. It can come from any of the things we picked. I think maybe my older sister was trying to slay this basilisk and was a lot like you. Mm-hmm. In fact, you and her had a thing. Mm-hmm. And she totally thought she could take this on and died trying. And fucking terrified us all. Okay. Like the, the basilisk, basilisk terrified us all by its power and how gruesomely it killed her so uh, is our vow to kill the basilisk and to uncover her remains sure and maybe our long term is to find a way to stop the petrification 
Petrification? Yeah. She's petrified, sitting in its stomach, and we have enough time to save her before she's fully digested. Is what the quest oh. said. Yeah. Oh, so she she's still surviving? She's yeah. living? Oh. Sure. Cool. Uh, we'll shrink this basilisk down just a tad to a formidable. So you want to bubble in the formidable at the top of your vows. And then recover. Makari. Why don't you pick a name that you rolled up earlier as your sister's name from uh, your sheet? Um, Asha. Asha. Maybe, uh, maybe my blade has the ability to mark other blades to like, it's kind of like, uh, in Magi, I can create like, uh, my servants can also get like blade bound abilities or something. Mm. So getting the sword back means like getting a piece of family back as well. Uh, cool. Uh, I ran out of lead. There's another pencil. No. Here's another pencil. And then we need a background vow. So maybe it's something to have to do with the secrets of the metal pillars. Oh my god. Maybe it is like Attack on Titan. We're like, what's the secret of the Titans? What's the secret of the metal pillars? Oh, like that. What are you saying? That's the second vow? Like our big vow. Like our big oh, goal. Oh. Yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah. Discover the secret of the metal pillars. And I swore that on my sword. And we're gonna make that the biggest one. We're gonna make that a fucking epic quest. And then in your bonds, because we have three bonds, you wanna make three lines inside of there. When there are four lines, the box is complete. The bonds at the end of the game, like when we decide like we finally want the character to retire, their life story is determined by how many bonds we have at the end. How many lines? Three lines. Cool. So our inciting incident is that we have to recover Makari's sister, Asha, before she's fully digested by this not quite as powerful basilisk. <laughs> We're going a little easy mode on this one. Um, and we probably lost... A, uh, a couple of our free wardens, whatever our group name is, uh, to this basilisk. Maybe there's only like half of us left. Okay. And our big goal was to discover the secret to the metal pillars. Why do the Iron Priests talk about it? I think the Iron Priests are going to be kind of like antagonistic for us throughout the series. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's those are our characters. We have bonds, vows, we have all of our stats uh put on and and our assets picked. Dope. What should my blade's name be? Is it Excalibur? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> Sex caliber. <laughs> 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 oh shit <laughs> has that been done before probably i'm sure it's probably a porn called that yikes this podcast is not for children yeah sorry folks <laughs> now it's rated m for mature <laughs> whoopsie daisy uh i'm just trying to figure out why i'm spirit bound because i was like dead sibling dead sibling but then we came up with Asha and the Basilisk. Maybe you become spirit bound to your sister. But she's not dead. Yet. Maybe she does die. Yeah, but I can't choose this now if I don't... <laughs> if she's not dead yet or if I don't know. Right? Well, could be spirit bound to my dead mother whom I killed... By being born. <laughs> well, marinate on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we are at the end of our time allotment here today. Uh, once again, my name is Jeremy. 
and my character's name is Penry Boss. My name is Grace, and my character's name is Makare Torgan. And we will see you next time here for our Iron Sworn co-op campaign uh, here on Roll, Roll to, to Forge. Forge. See you next time. Hey, bye. <laughs> <laughs>